This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer, Randy Moggins is with me, uh, and um, we have an excellent show for you tonight. And before we get started, just want to thank all the patrons. We've had another really exciting month with chats and and great you know discussion and comments and things going over there on our patreon page so if you haven't joined us over there yet hit it at patreon.com forward slash off planet media we're creating an awesome community there and we would love for you to join us and randy take it away randy's doing intro tonight i'm doing intro tonight i'm so excited <laughs> hey emily's got makeup on i'm so <laughs> jealous i would have worn blusher if i would have <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's coming one day. <laughs> it's coming one day. Yeah, my strangeness is definitely in order. Okay, so here we are. By the way, our website, if uh, for those of you who don't know, is offplanetradio.com, and you can get all of the links to the YouTube channel, the Patreon, and uh, archives of most recent shows in MP3 format. You don't have to watch the video. Um, so. Our guests and they can't see the makeup you're going to wear one day. Well, they will. <laughs> Trust me, that will be dished all over the net that day. I can tell you right now. Oh, boy. All right. Our guest tonight uh, comes to us from uh, somewhere south of the Mason-Dixon line in a place called South Carolina. He's a legend in the industry. He is one of the true pioneers of alternative media. His name is Freeman. And he's been on the forefront of conspiracy theory for two decades. He's an internationally known award-winning TV producer, filmmaker, radio talk show host, and lecturer, and a frequent guest on many high-profile media outlets, as well as a widely published writer. He is considered to be an expert in the fields of occult, trauma-based, mind control, Illuminati symbolism, and ancient civilizations. He's lectured extensively, and I've seen this firsthand, by the way, I saw him in Philadelphia, He's lectured extensively on the secret signs and symbolisms of Freemasonry, the ancient astronaut hypothesis, trauma-based mind control, social engineering, government conspiracy, human cloning, technologies of the future, and synchronicity. He is considered to be an expert in the fields of occult mind control and symbolism in ancient civilizations. His website is freemantv.com, and we welcome back to Off Planet Radio after a very long time. Freeman, welcome back, my friend. Thank you so much, Randy. How are you? Uh, we're doing great. We're go doing great. It's been since, um, let me think, maybe 2014 since we talked on air last. Wow. We were doing yeah. TV then, so uh, back in network days, good days, bad days. Anyway, <laughs> so it's good to have you back. Yeah, good to be back. I think I've been in a bit of a hermit hole lately. So. Mm, yeah, you have. You've almost been... I won't say disappeared, but it feels like you've been a distant echo lately, and we want to touch base with you. Yeah, well, I'm glad to come back out of my shell. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe so, we'll... Go ahead, Emily. No, I was going to say, so it's funny that tonight, Randy and I both showed up with intros to the show, which almost never happens. Never happens. And no. at, least, at least the first part of your intro was almost exactly the same as what my intro is going to be. Pretty much. <laughs> So we're just, we're melding. We're becoming one. We are, yes. Uh, and, and actually, you know, I'm, Randy and I have both been on Freeman's show separately, and he's been here before I was here. And so this is the first time the three of us are all going to get to have a chat together. And um, I think we're going to get deep and get weird, dude. I'm literally looking forward to it. Absolutely. So when we, we did the intro and I introduce you, you're obviously covering all of the basic areas that we go into a lot and you've obviously been doing this for a very long time um by way of reaching back a little bit into the past freeman you have basically organized principles of prediction that have allowed you to kind of tunnel through time starting with bill clinton forward and you have this this like massive 
interlaced theory that seems to be almost the theory of everything in terms of political conspiracy. So starting back with the Clinton administration, maybe weave us through a little bit of this to kind of bring us up to speed. Yeah, waking up to Waco, right? Oh, yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, that was my earliest days, by the way, was the Waco era. That's when I was starting to go on shortwave. Right. So, yeah. And, I mean, you know, you saw everything that was going down with and Yeah, so the whole Clinton... Clinton scandals, the the deaths, the the suicide list, the everything that went around, the Arkansas cocaine scandals, the you know all that with the Clintons. Oh my God! Um, and then you know Y two K. So Y two K, I think, was one of the first things to really spark me into understanding that there was a global ritual being performed on the planet, mm. and most of the symbolism that I saw seemed to rate to Lucifer. Uh, in a, and I, I can give you some examples. Uh, so they they started at the pyramids, right? With an, and, and what was crazy about Y2K that I saw that has not occurred since, since, uh, you know, uh, a New Year's celebration has never been global again. But Y2K was global. And it was, I mean, there was a country, uh, an island, the nation that adopted daylight savings time so that they would be the first people to hit uh, Y2K and be the first ones to ring into the new year of millennium. Yep, absolutely. But so in witnessing what was going on, I saw them burn the River Thames at the speed of the sun. And they announced this as they did. And I, I, I was recording all of this on VHS at the time, which turned into my very first television show. Right, it was these VHS recordings I did of the Y Y two K celebration back in the day. So them burning the Thames River at the speed of the sun, uh, the burning river, of course, relating back to sticks and the fires yeah. of hell, and then the speed of the sun. This starts getting into the Luciferian type of symbolism. Um, they built the Millennial Dome for that moment, and this. Uh, solidified the hermaphroditic symbolism that they needed in the city of London. They had Big Ben as the phallus, but they really didn't have a feminine. So they put the eye, that big Ferris wheel, which was right. a feminine, yep. the circle, uh, because the whole symbolism is the point within the circle. You know, it's a sexual symbol, and it's uh, it's the sun sign, right? So that's the burning the river at the speed of the sun, point within the circle, the millennial dome, the, the eye, as they, they managed to call it. That all unified in the Y2K celebration for them. Uh, they played the 12 dreams of the sun at the pyramids and had all of this display on there with the eye of Horus and even uh, Anubis standing in men in black suits, right? Full men in black type outfits with the tie and everything, but Anubis masks on standing in front of the pyramids as Jean-Michael Jarre played the 12 dreams of the sun. Again, back to the sun. Wow, sun. yeah, I forgot about Jean-Michael Jarre doing that. Yeah, yeah, wow. everybody thought it was gonna be Pink Floyd, right? I'm like, no, you don't understand what's going on. Um, so then come over to America, and we have Bill Clinton now as president standing out there. And he tells this story of how Benjamin Franklin had a painting of uh, a sun low on the horizon, as he put it. And he often wondered whether it was a rising sun or a setting sun. And I'm here to tell you it is a rising sun. And it's funny because you can, and I have the video in my corporate logos film, you can hear the whole audience kind of sit there pause for a minute and then realize they're supposed to cheer to the rising sun symbolism but they you know weren't in the club so they didn't really get it <laughs> they felt the pause and they all cheered for it and he says our children are ready then they made this light beam shine from behind i think it was the jefferson memorial that was so bright that you could witness it from europe and it appeared as if the sun was rising in the west so this is another symbol to Horus, uh, the sun rising in the west, and again, another Luciferian symbol of the rising sun. So, you know, watching the entire Y2K symbolism going on while recognizing the potential of the, the crash of all the computers and being introduced uh, to the Masonic chip program, uh, the child identification yeah. program, right? 
was all just hitting us hard at that moment. So all of a sudden there was this whole new world and here was the president giving secret coded messages and the whole world was involved. They were all doing these rituals, you know, from London and France and England and every one of them uh, doing this. So that kind of just opened my mind to that whole potential and possibility. And I was starting to understand that, you know, Freemasonry and all of that and deeper and deeper into that. Um, so with Bill Clinton, once I had that, that idea in my mind, um, I started to look at the puzzle a little deeper. And here was Bill Clinton every year during his administration trying to pass the Homeland Security Act. Now, they had Tom Ridge, Governor Tom Ridge of Pennsylvania, waiting yep. in the wings. He yep. was head of Homeland Security, but there was no such thing, right? So, obviously, they needed Homeland Security. They already hired the guy to, to you know, run it. <laughs> uh, but every October, this Homeland Security bill came up, and every October, nothing happened. No one would pass it. It was the most unconstitutional thing, right? Uh, but I keyed into that, and I said, well, you know, this false flag, right? I didn't know the word false flag. I didn't know any of this, but I said, they're going to need a major terrorist attack in the middle of September in order to cause this Homeland Security thing to pass so that Tom Ridge could get a job, right? <laughs> and I, I began analyzing the politics of this, and I saw that they brought Bill Clinton in front of the public unlike any other president, and announced that he had inserted a cigar into his secretary, Monica Lewinsky. The president turned purple in front of all of us and continually asked for bathroom breaks to get the heck out of the room. And the entire world witnessed as this man, the symbol of America, was defiled and debased and just brought down for... You know, they mentioned inserting a cigar into his secretary. You know what I mean? This is <laughs> not. This, <laughs> yeah. I remember. This like, was I not something you do, right? The news suddenly became R-rated, verging on X at yes. this point in time. I, mean, I don't know that people realize Bill Clinton introduced to an entire generation the whole concept of this 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 act. The, and and and. It's yeah. a, to this day, we have Bill Clinton to thank for sexual awareness on a whole other level with a generation of kids that grew up with this around it. That's true, too. Yeah, that whole system changed in the but school. But isn't it interesting, by the way, the act he's famous for was the literal outworking of the whole masculine, feminine thing on another level. I mean, the very thing that you're talking about, the symbolism going on in the city of London with the dome and with Big Ben, the phallus, and the food. Oh, yeah, he did exactly. And, the yeah. and, and, and Clinton's, and see that this kind of goes into the whole thing of, are they really so unconscious of the acts that they're walking through? Is there a script for this? Is there just so, such a massive symbolism that translates back into gritty reality? I mean... When you're talking about some flashing on all this stuff. Yeah, we're going to find everybody's a dupe. And they all, you know, you just find the right person that's going to, they, they create the culture and the culture creates the perfect growth of what they need, you know? So like, I would say that they don't pay Alex Jones to do their work. They just created the culture for Alex Jones to rise, you know? Or Marilyn Manson, we'll use him as an example. You don't need to pay Marilyn Manson to be the Antichrist. You just make the culture necessary for that particular performance to create itself, and then you make sure it rises to the top. You know, so everybody's a dupe, right? Uh, because nobody knows the system, and the whole system is derived from ancient civilizations and understandings of the true history of planet Earth, which none of us have. Right. And all of the groups that we see that rule planet Earth, they have their secret history of the world. You know, the Vatican, yeah. the Masons, the Jesuits, the, you know, all of them, they've got their secret history of the world, including the archives that are supposedly, I'm told in Tel Aviv as well, that have been secreted there by the Sanhedrin for several thousand years. Which is another example of that. I, I don't know what that means. That, you know, I, I've actually had somebody on my show, Dr. Shamil Asher who's told me that the Vatican Library 
is paralleled by another library that is in Tel Aviv. Ah. It's held, held in trust by the Sanhedrin. Right. Okay. So you see, as long as our history is held, we're always slaves. We'll never be able to break free until we understand how the pyramids were built. But all of that symbolism was incorporated in this whole time period to show. And the, the Y2K, that was a, a very specific moment for them. You know, that's the year 8,000 Anno Lucius uh, for, the, uh, for the Masons. And it seems as if even all the way back to the Gregorian calendar that they actually messed up the entire calendar so that that day would fall on this particular you moment. Anno Lucius, you mean the year of Lucifer. Yeah, uh, the, the age of light, the year of light. Exactly. If you look at any Masonic corporate or Masonic cornerstone, you'll see it's dated to the year 5,971 AL. And that would be, uh, you know, something like 1974. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's 6,000 years older. It's just older than the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew okay. calendar. Okay. And, uh, and you'll see AL. So you'll see dates on these cornerstones, uh, you know, on the Pentagon. You'll see, I think, the AL. I'm not sure if they put it there. But you, you'll see it on any Masonic temple, A.L., Anno Lucius, the Age of Light, the Age of Lucifer. Yeah, it's right there in front of your face. I mean, if you know to look. Um, so putting this all together, seeing Bill Clinton taken down for an extramarital affair, something that most people considered normal for presidency. Nobody cared about you know JFK and Marilyn Monroe, things of that nature. And you certainly did not promote it to the entire world because that's a national security threat, right? right? So you're not going to demean your own president in front of the world unless you want to and you mean to, and it's leading to something else. So I was sitting there thinking, oh, God, okay. Um, if they're going to take him down, then they're going to force the next president into office. And I had a reason for this. Uh, you're taking down the man, the uh, man of the people who's on, like, Arsenio Hall playing his saxophone, right? You know, Bill Clinton was put out there as, like, just this normal dude. And you're taking them down for an extramarital affair, which is, you know, common. And nobody really cared, but they, they, sorry, I'm getting lost in my tangent there. Um, it, it all comes into play into Trump, and that's what I'm going to lead you to real fast. So once they took down the man of the people, Bill Clinton, I said they're going to force the next president into office. This destroys our concept of elections, voter fraud, right, was going to be the next key word. And so then after they force a president in office, the next thing they need is a president that's unconstitutional, right? So uh, now, again, every September, I was still waiting for something to occur to cause the Homeland Security Bill to pass in October. Why September? Why, tell me why you focused on September, Freeman. Because uh, I, I, I just guessed, all right, uh, you know, educated guess that it would take about two weeks of reaction time from the public for when Homeland Security Bill came again in October okay. for them to go, oh, yeah, okay, we need this. But a lot of people don't even know that this was all going on during Clinton, you know, during the Bill Clinton era, not, Donald, not George W. You know, this was all during Bill Clinton's era. Well, they, so. didn't, they first started after uh, Oklahoma City trying to, right, right? After Oklahoma City. Yeah, they that started sounds right. Yeah, to, the yeah. bombing in Oklahoma yeah. and all that. Yeah, I think they started in 96 or 97 was the first time they tried to pass it. And then they right. tried several times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, here we are all the way up to Y2K. And they're still trying and, and nothing would happen. So I then saw H.W. given his lecture on the New World Order. And, of course, was dated to 9-11-1990. I used that as a code. I, 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 it clicked with me because I was reading all these occult books. Yeah, no, now. actually, now, now that you mentioned that, okay, that's a real great pointer. Yeah. Yeah, because I learned that 9-11 was actually a symbol. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a date. It wasn't, uh, you know, 9-11 was the event at World Trade Centers was just another symbol to 9-11. So, like, at The Matrix, they had 9-11 in the movie. That was, in my opinion, from studying this, not a reference to the World Trade Center events, not some projection into the future by the Wykowski brothers, but an allusion to Lucifer. Because 9-11, uh, what you do is you go get the satanic works known as the Typhonian Trilogy. These were written by Kenneth Grant and uh, the Beast and 
his God. I, let's see. I'm trying to think of the titles of them, but they're called the Typhonian Trilogy uh, by Kenneth Grant. And this was the guy who took over the magical practices of the OTO after Aleister Crowley. Right. He was Crowley's accolade. And he has a whole satanic version of magic that is dedicated to channeling extraterrestrials or intercommunication with extraterrestrials using ritual magic. And this became the new formation of the Typhonian Lodge, the Typhonian Order of the OTO. <laughs> now, if you don't know about these magical orders, you've got to start learning this level because the magical orders are what's causing people to put domes and spires and, you know, hermaphroditic symbols and sex symbols. And even Katy Perry on a lion at the Super Bowl is an OTO <laughs> symbol, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the strength card from the tarot deck, and it was, we predicted it, right? I predicted that would occur. So uh, I know this is a lengthy tale, but it's worth telling. It is. That's great, yeah. So um, so I'm tying now in. Okay, so I witnessed the Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton, the fact that the Homeland Security Act hadn't passed and that they needed a, a major terrorist attack sometime in the middle of September. Once I learned of the 9-11 symbolism, the point of bringing up the Typhonian Trilogy by Kenneth Grant is there are entire chapters on 9 and 11. It is an ancient symbol. It is a, a Kabbalistic meaning. It has been in use long before the Wykowski brothers, long before the World Trade Center. This knowledge was already in existence. You know, this is 19... 60s, 70s, somewhere when Kenneth Grant yep. was writing these books. So 9-11 was a symbol because 9, okay, so what you have to do if you're looking at all the signs and symbols is uh, bring it to Kabbalism. And even Freemasonry is Kabbalism. So anything you look at, you need to transliterate to Hebrew or into Kabbalism, which requires the tarot and the tree of life. Right. Nine, there are 10 spots on the tree of life from earth to heaven. And 10 is the hermaphrodite, the Big Ben and the Millennial Dome, right? It's the one and the zero, the unification. It's God. And from 10, you go to 11, which is the magician, which is the one step. Then you start the bottom of the tree of life again and start rising again. So if you go from 9 to 11 on the tree of life, you have skipped God. You are now a sorcerer. You are an evil magician practicing magic without God in your combination Interesting. that's the meaning of 9-11 Interesting. so that's why when you went and blew and hit the the pentagon which of course the pentagon is a pentagram another magical symbol when they hit that if you look at the cornerstone on the pentagon what's the date 9-11 go look <laughs> if you wow. doubt me go look the cornerstone wow. still stands the jet didn't hit it but can, of course, I, rock. can I ask you what seems like yeah. maybe a stupid and unrelated question, but it's the first place that my mind went when you said that, right? So the unification of the one and the zero being God, and of course, my background being in gymnastics, that's the perfect 10, right? So that's godliness. Right. And now they've changed the scoring system. So there are no perfect 10s. People are getting scores like 13.672, right. right? So we have this strange scoring system that for gymnastics nerds like me, it makes sense and I can understand. But for the people who only watch at the Olympics, it's just confusing. But to me, the Olympics are part of the worship of this sort of Luciferian, satanic, whatever kind of thing. So the removal of the perfect 10, which was like the symbol of the Olympics, right? The gymnastics is always the highlight, the perfect, you get the perfect 10. You think of Nadia Comaneci and Mary Lou Retton. They've removed that. And now there's just this pantheon of gods that are something else. Right. right? right. Is that, so does that, does that sort of follow with what you were just saying? I think so. I think everything okay, yeah. is sent to disperse us right now and confuse us. And there's yeah. you know, uh, everything's opinion. Nothing is real anymore. So just for a second, while we're still hovering in around 9-11, zoom back for a minute. The whole scale up that centered around Y2K, the supposed turn of the millennium, was that kind of a, a misdirect? Because the, 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 truthfully, the beginning of the millennium was 2001. It wasn't right. 2000. But right. we're bass backwards. We've got computers that are supposedly going to massively fail. And we have this binary system, which is interesting. You have the old Unix operating system, 
the original networked binary network system, and it's failing, and it's going to fail in Y2K. But Y2K itself seemed to symbolize, to me, looking back on it, because I remember all this because I was working in the tech industry then, the whole thing was false. Most of those computers, the codes were updated nine, ten months before that, and there was very, really very little problem. Some systems were replaced. But the fact of the matter is that the whole thing was a gigantic panic to get people hyped up. And I have to think this is like two things. It's a misdirect and it's a loose harvesting fest for what? The extraterrestrials, the the, the, the archons? What? Kenneth Grant's extraterrestrial Kenneth, connection. Hey, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Let me give you two things on that. Uh, one is that uh, they were charging $10 a line to fix the codes, and there was some yep. 5 billion lines of code at the, yes. the DOD alone, right? So, yeah, 5 billion lines, uh, $10 a line, DOD going to make some bank. Sounds like quite a party, right? $10 yeah. a and line. Then, and then all of a sudden, on 9-11, right. all this money disappears. <laughs> Yes. And then, uh, you know, the Twin Towers, all the gold disappears, right? Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, they built this thing they called Command Central. Mm -hmm. And they announced it to everyone. We're building Command Central. It is a central hub for all resources. We can't tell you where it is. It's a top secret. But uh, we are building Command Central, a deep underground military base that all resources will be routed through in case of natural disaster or terrorist strike we will still have free access to, say, the stock market. Hmm. Mm. What happened on 9-11? They shut down the stock market, didn't they? That's right. They did. But guess yeah. what? They built Command Central for that very purpose. And they announced it to us. It wasn't hidden. You can go look this up. It was on the news. Revolution of the method. Terrorist attack occurs. Yeah. We can still run the stock market through Command Central. Because that's the most important thing. And that was in Y2K when they announced that, you know, that a whole fear thing that we had, you know, like we do now with seed vaults and everything else, but uh, started with Command Central and the building of that and, and then realizing that the stock market was still running even after 9-11 uh, during those days that they said it was shut down. I mean, unless, you know, they were lying. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> which side were lying, right? Which, which end of the lie do we want to believe here? Yeah. Um, so sure enough, yeah, 9-11 occurred. Now, I'll also tell you that if you went to the t uh, Twin Towers and looked at the cornerstones, guess what the date is on the cornerstone of the Twin Towers? You're not going to believe me. <laughs> but it's 9-11. All right, so 9-11 coded the Pentagon. You can go see Masonically laid, Masonically ritually placed cornerstone dated to 1940 was whenever it was built. 9-11, 1940 seven or something yeah, like. nice but point. definitely 9 11 and if you could find a picture of the cornerstones of the twin towers which i have not been able to find you will see because i saw them for myself that they are also dated to 9 11 1970 whichever year that was that right. was the year yeah it was 1970 yeah. so uh you know both buildings were coded to 9 11 i'm just saying uh that the 9 11 is a symbol not not a date and so when I saw HW, now W, when they, when they mentioned that there was a W running for office, I said, that's the guy they're going to force into office. Now, the reason being W is the symbol of the fallen angels. <laughs> Go figure, right? I'm going around, I'm figuring out all the corporate logos and their Masonic slash Kabbalic meanings, right? Mm -hmm. And I come to Philip 66, and I'm completely oh, stumped, I'm stumped on that one. Like, why 66? Why root 66? You know, what's the 66 all about? And it was the only corporate logo that I hadn't really deciphered. Now, it also has six points on the crest of Philip 66, the gas station. Yeah. Uh, owned yeah. by Prince Philip. So you can have a coded 666 right there, right? Um, but 66, I just went to the Magician's Dictionary. You can go look it up online, you know, the Magician's Dictionary, and open up to numerology and look up what 66 means and it is the number of what they call the cleafot now these are the beasts inside of the abyss which are titled typhon so okay. this very 9-11 symbolism from the typhonian trilogy typhon are 
the number 66 mm. in the magician's dictionary. It's also the number of the great work, which is symbolized by the eye over the yep. pyramid. Okay. Is that so the W? also a 66. Okay. So now how do I get 66 to equal W? Well, in Hebrew, six is V. Mm -hmm. and it looks ah. like the monster drink Va. logo. It's Va, yeah. Yeah, Vav. Yeah. And so uh, that's the monster drink logo is the Hebrew letter V, which is the number <laughs> six. So is. you got 666 <laughs> as your monster yeah. drink logo, right? Right. But VV is 66. And so when I saw W, okay, another example of this is Hitler. Now, Hitler was heavily into Kabbalism, carried around all of Madame Blavatsky's books. He had his own magical rites with the Thule Society, you know, and they said we have put him in communication with them, which yeah. meant the others, that magical connection. The OTO was talking about same stuff the Nazis was doing, right? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the OTO claimed to be the forebears of the Illuminati, the Nazis, and all of that. So, W. 6-6, six, six, VV, if you take the VV and you cross it like Hitler did with his Volkswagen logo, oh my. you got 666 six, six again. What about there's now in most major sort of cosmopolitan cities, there's a W hotel generally what right somewhere in the heart of what would be sort of the heart of darkness of the city, right? Certainly yep. here in Los Angeles and Austin, they put one right downtown, right? I mean, you know with where they put giant one. giant W on top. Huge, huge. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that is a symbol of the abyss, the fallen angels, those that have died insane, and the great work of Freemasonry and the Illuminati. So according to the Magician's Dictionary, all right, this is not my theory, you know, not my, I, I go to the sources and I research and I find the answers, you know, so I'm not making this stuff up, right? But it worked because I said, look, they're going to force that W into office and they're going to make it obvious. They're going to make sure everybody knows that he was forced into office. What happened? Right. He was forced into office through Jeb Bush in Florida. Right. And it was a whole big deal. Voter fraud. Right. Yeah. Hanging chads. The whole works. Yeah. 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 So so made it very obvious. OK, so this is where we're going to get to later as we start to discover that we're all dupes. So you were meant to fall for that conspiracy theory and get angry about it. Get angry about the fact that Jeb Bush put the president in office because you were supposed to feel out of control as if you had lost all of, you know, control of your elections and voter fraud and power. So obviously the next thing to do, well, okay. So once they forced the W into office, that's when I said, okay, they're not going to wait. There's going to be a major terrorist attack. It's going to happen on the middle of September. And I bet it happens on nine 11. And, uh, this is all for your reaction, guys. Was there any significance to Al's last name being Gore with this? I don't know, but he did get caught in, a, in the airport with a suitcase full of blood. Interesting. And then we'll also, and then the Gore of 9-11, which was coming after this forcing of, of you know, W into office. But that, I just, that just occurred to me right now. I never thought about it before. I didn't know he got caught with a suitcase full of blood. That's right. Yeah, uh, man, these guys are baby eaters. They're blood yeah. drinkers. They're, yeah. you know, I don't call them Illuminati. I call them baby eaters. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. what they are. And so sure enough, 9-11 happened. I announced it to a, a number of people at a party. And, you know, I had a bunch of shocked people at my door screaming at me. How did you know? How did you know? Now, this is another weird part of this story. As I had a dozen people at my house screaming at me, I didn't know even that 9-11 had happened or that it was 9-11 that day. I didn't have a TV or a calendar. So even though I had made the projection, I hadn't, I didn't know I was right. You know what I mean? Like this was all, I announced it to test my own theory. Like I do now. That's what I do with my podcast. Mm -hmm. I announce this stuff and like, let's see if I'm right. You know what I mean? And I'm never wrong. All right. And I'm not trying to be that. I'm just watching this thing. And information is finding me. It's like hunting me down. I'm, I'm always say I haven't gone looking for any of this. It comes and finds me. Like I didn't go looking for 9-11 as a symbol. I found it. It found me. I ended up with the books. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm going to tie this all up really fast. Uh, Take your time. This is great. I'm enjoying okay. it. <laughs> okay. Immensely. Immensely. Well, so the, the very curious thing for me as a conspiracy theorist, here I have all these people yelling at me at my front door. How'd you know? How'd you know? I didn't know any of this dozen people. They were at that party. I wish I did. 
I would bring them before you. I would have them tell you the story. I have a few people that I know that could tell you that this is the God's honest truth that I'm telling you that I predicted 9-11 and freaked a bunch of people out at a party. I, this is the God's honest truth. I could bring you people, but I wish I could find the ones that I don't know. That would be far more dramatic. Mm, yeah. But there's, there's a dozen people out there that know this is true and, and more, but a dozen people that came and yelled at me. Now, what was really bizarre was they all had their $20 or two of them had their $20 bills already folded as the Twin Towers. Mm. Now, you may not believe me on this because logically this should not Did you show them that too? Did you show them that or did they know that from someone else? Well, that was the big question, right? Here are people that know nothing, all right? When I predicted 9-11, people didn't know Jack, right? I'm the guy who created the concept of Masonic corporate logos. I started this whole thing. Before me, there was very little. And certainly the people in the, in the normal world knew nothing. You know, these people were flabbergasted, shocked that I was able to predict a major event like the World Trade Center, right? Yeah. They, they didn't have a clue. So how did they know, right? On 9-11, all right? This makes no sense whatsoever, and I wouldn't believe me if I were you, right? Yeah. Like, if I were listening to me, I'd be like, this guy's so full of it. But it's true, okay? And the reason I bring it to your attention is because they wanted you to know. Here were a bunch of norms that knew how to fold a $20 bill to show the Twin Towers burning on the day of 9-11. Like, that's not possible. It's mm. not possible somebody I don't think I knew that. Out. I don't think I knew that until quite a bit later. Yes. But yeah. But it was on the internet. How about this? Yeah. Uh, Y2K, when you signed into AOL, remember AOL? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They you give you a little mail. poll question. They give you a little poll question every time you sign in, do you, do you know? That's right. Okay. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that right. was, uh, collecting information before Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> the, the question on Y2K, January 1st, was, would you take a national ID card? Wow. Whoa. That's the truth. I mean, I lived through this. This is all I got. I lived through this experience, and I'm just sharing with you my life, right? You know, um, so I'm freaking out that these people have had that. And so for me, that knowledge was showing me that they wanted us to know, you know, inside job. My butt, there was no inside job. The Bin Ladens built the Twin Towers. They were one of the, the construction crews on the Twin Towers. You know what I mean? They were flying out of LaGuardia on 9-11. You know, they were allowed to fly home when no one else was allowed in the skies. Right. I mean, come on. Inside job. No. The whole goal was to turn you against your own nation. You can't bring down a nation without people who hating it. And so that was the beginning of this. And that was my whole projection was don't freak out. This is all for your reaction. I never heard of David Icke and his public react or, you know, reaction solution. None of that. I didn't know Alex Jones, right? But in a way, I was predicting Alex Jones. Uh, because he, I was gonna say, was he, I was gonna say, was he at the party? Because everyone always attributes his prediction of 9/11 to having been stolen from Bill Cooper. But maybe he was at the party and heard you talking about yeah, it. Yeah, but Bill Cooper really was there first. No, I, 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 I'm, yeah, I, know, I know, but yeah, yeah. But yeah he, they he, all got the event. I got the date, right? Yeah. So had we all known each other, we would have been spot on. Yeah. Because I, I only had the date. All I said would there be a major terrorist attack. I didn't know what it would be. But I tell you. Since I was focused on the numbers, 9-11, instead of the event, I would have been able to tell you the targets had I known the cornerstones of these buildings because I was looking for 9-11 at that point. You know, the mid-September thing, that all happened during the Bill Clinton era. But by the time W and HW came to the frame, then I had readjusted my understanding to the magical practices and adjusted my projection to that day, 9-11. So... That all happened. So then I was like, okay, what's next? They took down the man of the people, Bill Clinton, made him look like a fool for an extramarital affair. Uh, and then they brought up voter fraud and brought W, forced him to office, made you disbelieve in your system. So now they need to attack the Constitution. So I said, okay, and this is on my website. So at least this one, I had a website by this time. I was already in play. And I announced that... Uh, the next president will not be an American citizen, will not be considered an American citizen. So next thing I know, Orly Tates. Oh, my God. I mean, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. 
<laughs> they selected her because she can't speak a lick of English. You know, you can't understand a word she's saying, right? Even though Donald Trump claims it was him that got the, the well, we'll get to that. Uh, Orly Tates comes out and she's, you know, she's sitting there like, oh, there's, uh, you know, this birth certificate's a fake. It's a fake. And I said, no, that's the conspiracy you're supposed to believe. Just like you were supposed to believe the Jeb Bush conspiracy, now you're supposed to believe that Obama's not an American citizen. And so you're falling for it again. The birther is the conspiracy, not yeah. the other way yeah. around. Right. And you're falling for it again. And I mean, I've got the PSD or the PDF of Barack Obama's birth certificate that you can sure. move the stuff well, around yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have uh, well, my own theories on where he came from, but this is above and beyond this story, right? <laughs> right this we, yes. is not that story, right? Yes. Um, but that didn't come much later, that's for sure. But sure enough, uh, you know, having him forced into office to, and or having uh, the whole birth of this thing. Okay, so the conclusion to this story. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton are having a debate, their very first debate. And they've got 25 minutes to convince the American public that they are the best choice for presidency, right? <laughs> what did they spend the first 10 minutes about? Well, they brought four of the women Bill Clinton had raped and had them in the audience. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. The insertion of the cigar, the destruction yeah. of that. Right? Yeah. Right? So, you know, defraud, defame, debase. The, the character of our ideal, the man, you know, the president. Man of the people, right. All right. So then what was next? It's all rigged. It's all rigged, Trump says. Voter fraud. What happened with W? Ah, yeah, Bush. Yeah. Voter fraud, right? So what was next? That They had 10 minutes left in this debate to decide who is going to be running our country. What did they talk about after having the rape victims of Bill Clinton on stage and voter fraud? Barack Obama's birth certificate, of course. And they argued over, because there was a time when Hillary Clinton was claiming that she was the one who really brought that up, but then later Donald Trump became known for that, right? So they were arguing over who was the first person that, okay, yeah. Okay, so why in this most important debate of who's going to run our country, are we discussing the sexual victims of Bill Clinton, having them in, there in the audience, talking about voter fraud, and it's all rigged, and Very then good. discussing 10 minutes to the last, you know, on Barack Obama's birth certificate. What did he have to do with this? Very what good, Freeman. Yeah. Have to do with so 18 years I covered this story was all, and they did it again in the second debate, was all re-emphasized the social engineering again and again in this Donald Trump debate. And then I've been talking about this concept of the honey boo boo effect. Okay, so everything is, is established to bring down America. You needed to hate America, and that's what they were doing. And so now you hate America. You want to bring Hillary to trial. You want to bring Bushes to trial. You want to bring America to the Nuremberg trials and get America in the world court, don't you? Yeah, basically. Well, that's, what yeah. that's what they want. Yeah. The lynching yeah. of America. Exactly, yeah. and it has to happen from within. Yeah. It can't happen from without. Right, yeah. or else we'll all fight it. So they made us destroy our own country. And what uh, what happened with Donald Trump now is the final conclusion. What I call the satanification of America, which I really mean making America the adversary, uh, using the honey boo boo effect. Why is it the honey boo boo effect? Can you explain to us why it's the honey boo boo effect? Yeah, they have now convinced the rest of the world that we're all a bunch of honey boo boos. Do you know honey boo boo? I've heard yeah, of it, but I don't, really, I, I don't really know any. I've heard of it. I know it was a TV show or something, but I, I don't really know. It's like a. It was the most girl, degenerate, like little girl and her mom. people that okay. ate. They they ate spaghetti with ketchup, you know, like yeah. on television. <laughs> they became the most famous hillbilly bumpkins out there. Mom was just huge, big old lady, and Honey Boo Boo was their. That's the whole daughter. point of MAGA, MAGA, whatever, is a Honey Boo Boo effect. Exactly. Kind of, they, yeah. Well, they, they they convinced the rest of the world by sharing Honey Boo Boo. You know, you can put in, you know, whatever. America's Duck Dynasty or whatever, all that kind of shit. Exactly. Right? And yeah. and convince the rest of the world that we're all a bunch of Honey Boo Boos. And Donald Trump is the perfect Honey Boo Boo president 
So now we have like <laughs> we're completely deflated. You know what I mean? So right. that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That this entire setup for 18 years has been to convince us to destroy our nation from within, and here's all the evidence. So then, just out of curiosity, because this is kind of the the next little spot we're at, what is the QAnon nonsense about? I I don't honestly follow QAnon, but Maybe, uh, yeah, us either. But everybody else talks about it all the time, and it seems like that might be part of this get, getting everybody to pay attention to all these crimes America committed might be sort of the legitimization of his bringing down of the country. Exactly. Yes. Okay. He, he controls the narrative. All right. QAnon could be a foreigner. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the, the language that we read from QAnon is not proper English. Right. Uh, he could be an AI, <laughs> right? Uh, because some of it just seems kind of artificial. And then, or uh, just, you know, a faction within the, the deep state or legitimate whatever, but what QAnon is accomplishing that task. What QAnon is doing is guiding the narrative, telling yeah. you which articles to read, which ones to believe, which ones not to believe, and yes, guiding the narrative for sure, leading America to the world court, which has been the the end goal of all this. Yeah, wow, that's I mean, <laughs> that's that's quite a story you've put together, but it's all you made it up and it came through anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell that to my mom. I was like, I make everything up and it comes true anyway. You you really did so. Yeah. Wow. That was, so, that was quite a story. <laughs> so in that narration, which took us, you know, 18, wow, 18 years, really? It has been that long. That's, a, that's actually like the story of the dividing of ages when you think about it in America. Something changed. Something shifted. Well, and it took 18 years, so it went from it took you straight to adulthood, sort of like it was. That's yeah, a really no, it was a maturation. Yeah. Or the putrefaction, depending on how you look at it. I mean, in a sense, it, the whole thing is just surreal, because we're sitting here, and before we went to record tonight, you know, you you kind of outlined this, and I've been spending days now thinking about what this president, Donald Trump, represents. And he represents something different to almost everybody. He's like a lightning rod. He is like the schismatic figure that magnetizes everybody's most, most basic or base instincts. In other words, you have the patriots out there who have embraced this guy, oh, he's going to drain the swamp, he's going to clean things up. You have the left, which is foaming at the mouth now. I mean, we've had everything from the pussy hat marches in Washington, D.C., to some of the most vitriolic reactions I've ever seen towards well, and any... The, and this whole movement. Russian nonsense. Like and, the, and, and the Russia thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he represents something that almost feels like a lightning rod. It almost feels like this is the moment, something's gonna happen, it's a highly charged situation, and every day I get up, somebody somewhere, no matter how I insulate myself, goes, so what do you think Trump's gonna do now? And I'm kinda like, you know, I don't know. Because Somebody's watch, gonna get fired. <laughs> if you're watching the news, you're believing what they're telling you to think about it, and yet he seems to zig to the zag. So. Where is Trump really going with this? What does he represent to you, Freeman? Yeah, I mean, is he going to get fired? Is that the whole point, that the tables are going to be turned and he's going to get fired? <laughs> I mean, like... You're it, fired. We, well, we yeah, went three decades. Uh, that Mark Burnett also created Survivor. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I am an official Survivor fan. Oh, oh, that's a good look for you, actually, Freeman. I it like is, it. It is, it is. Yeah, it's a good look. <laughs> Had I known about Survivor about 10 years ago, I probably would have been on it. Yeah. So, uh, but, yeah, I just happen to have my Survivor buff hanging, hanging. You know, I, I'm, but, yeah, so, you know, Hunger Games is on the way, right? Yeah. Well, all right, who's the white knight? Who's putting in the, in the chair as the supreme hero riding on white stallion, stallions with his shirt off? Putin. Well, there's pic there's pictures of him on Vanity Fair, right? Was exactly. He yeah, topless on Vanity knight. Fair. Yeah. He's very butch, actually. He really is. 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's the man, you know. The, and he, so, he represents toxic masculinity. <laughs> he's, right? Yeah, but he's like the opposite he's of so what they're strong. doing to America. So they're building up. I mean, Putin's giving land to the people. He's following the rules or the teachings of Anastasia. You know, he's doing he's talking about harp. He was a, a harp activist, a chemtrail activist, a uh, few other things on the list. And so he is. He's the actor that's portraying the white knight. And so then you can see the shift to the Russia-China alliance and how the Russia-China space program is becoming dominant over what's going on with America's space program, even though they just suddenly launched to Mars without me noticing. I don't know how that happened. But I follow a lot of that as well because the launching of the space, uh, the space tech and the space war is the next level, the next step in this whole thing. And I'm not talking about some secret space program. I'm talking about yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about an official space program that is secret. <laughs> right. Like, you know, yeah. we all know the X-37B is ordering orbiting the planet, but nobody knows what it's doing. So that's the secret. You know, it's it's not a secret that they launched to Mars uh, just the other day, but no one told me. I don't know how I missed that one. So that one's kind of standing on wow. me. But you know, Kazakhstan and the whole Russian area, Astana. And all of the rocket. Uh, Astana, have you look, have you just looked at pictures of Astana, Kazakhstan? I did a whole documentary about it. Yeah, look. When I just look at those pictures, I'm like, oh, that is like an otherworldly looking city. That is like exactly. makes like the Emerald City look silly. You know what I mean? Right. Just like the way everything there has that sort of op opalescent, it's prismatic sort of pink and blue light off of it. Everything is geometric. Everything. Have you ever looked at pictures of Astana, Randy? No, I have not. Oh boy. Yeah, like I have a great film on it. It's called New World Capitals. Highly huh. recommend it. All righty. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's on YouTube, New World Capitals, uh, because Astana is astonishing. And Astana yep. means threshold. It certainly yeah. does. It certainly does. But right there, bump up against the threshold for like one world and the other. That's exactly. Yeah. Well, and just one world. You don't even need the other. Right. Because right. what they have is the pyramid of peace that yep. enters Astana, and that's where the Global Council of Religions meets, around well, a giant sun table. When I say one world and another, what we thought I of as Earth meant. and what we thought of as space are now kind of becoming one, and that's that, you know what I mean? Like, it has that sort of quality to it, that just like, mm, you know. Wow, that, that goes in a whole different space altogether, too. Yeah. I mean, okay, look at Astana from uh, uh, a satellite view, and you'll see yep. that it's a pre-planned city designed as a seal of Solomon of to control demons. That's so if you look at Solomon's yes. grimoire, which was used to build the, the Solomon's temple, which mm -hmm. is what every Masonic temple represents, Solomon used demons to build that temple. This is open knowledge. With yes, men absolutely, men. yeah. And yep. Solomon's grimoire, we've seen his magical seals. Take one of those seals and put it up against Astana, which I did in my documentary, New World Capitals. You can see this. Uh, this we'll the, link to that in the description of the show. So, all right. Yeah. The city itself is designed as a magical seal to utilize the power of demons. Uh, you can see it for yourself. So, so again, I'm going to go back to... Talking about one world and the other, you know. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, go back. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the early part of the narration again because what you were talking about, the burning of the Thames, the river Styx, what was symbolically basically the unleashing of the beast from the pit. So are we now looking at a cycle where where this Astana is established, and we see the beast finally being corralled, controlled. In other words, bringing the new world order into alignment in some place that's not america yes yes exactly yeah. exactly it, no one when people think of kazakhstan they think of borat right they think yeah. of yeah. women yeah. with their goats yeah <laughs> they, don't, they don't think of the i mean astana is so futuristic looking and they're telling us that the future is there basically right that yeah that is, yeah it yeah, so Dubai, cool. Astana, oh my God, yeah. you know, these are the most futuristic cities on the planet. Yeah, yeah. So are we seeing also the formation of the perfection of the hermaphroditic ideal? Is that what this is? Bruce Jenner, right? <laughs> well, not only, but it's 
Bruce Jenner. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went, you mentioned the Wachowski brothers. Sorry, dude. It's mm -hmm. like Wachowski yeah. sisters right now. And to me, this, and Emily and I have been talking about this. This has come out on a number of shows now. What is really going on with the transgender agenda? <laughs> The, oh, trans, yeah. the trans agenda. The trans yeah. agenda. Trans yeah, agenda, yeah. 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 But it feels to me like it's, first off, there are principles in cosmology in nature, and then there are principles that are occultic, that are dark, and forced to create effects to pervert natural process. And so the more I look at this, I realize that what we're in right now is we're in this, this space where all of this tinkering is going on with pharmaceuticals and chemistry and body parts. and They made sheeple. You heard about the sheeple, right? Yeah. Uh, I think he's talking about something different than what we usually no, think of the sheeple. The, the, the sheep human hybrids. This I did not hear about. That. Okay, I, I'm just throwing this, it off as a side this comment. hour with real, real shocker. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, oh, tell, yeah. Us, no, tell they, us about the sheeple. They've not only hybridized us with sheep, which was the most recent. Uh, the goal here was to grow sheep with human DNA that would grow human body parts inside of them. This particular. Oh, I have heard of that. Okay, okay. Was yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. A human pancreas inside of a I sheep. I have heard of that. Yeah. But they've also now grown a uh, human brain inside of mice, and they also hybridized humans with cows and pigs. So that was yeah. uh, the honey boo boo. I have a pig heart, uh, which was a South Park <laughs> episode. Park man, I hated them for the longest time because they were so, you know, that's what I saw them trying to create, turn us into the honey boo boo effect, the South Park effect. You right. know, every, you know, ouch my balls. Yeah. You uh, will obey my authority. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, and I, there is rumor that there's a Freeman fan on the South Park writing staff, which I do believe because suddenly they started hitting on everything that I talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now I'm not against South Park anymore. They've snuck in and they've managed to get all these details in. And the Honey Boo Boo is one. But another great one to watch is the uh, Pine Box Derby which starts with them uh, getting an anti-particle from CERN and uh, goes to extraterrestrials locking up planet Earth in a cube because we still believe in money. Uh. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. But, you know, if you look at this, I mean, South Park, The Simpsons, um, these, animated, these animated programs seem in their own space to also be articulating future trending prediction uh, is yeah, that, that, yeah. I mean, you know, if you just look at The Simpsons, uh, the, the track record is actually pretty good. Trump not as good, not, not as good Trump. as Freeman's, though. <laughs> not as good, no, right? because they, they don't have a good list, actually theme, but right. They got a good list, though. So, yeah. yeah. You got to wonder. You know, I, I sit and wonder that all the time. Like, do these guys actually well, know? Who, you know? You, or, but here's the thing, like, and this can be, I think this can lead us into where we're going to go in the second hour. Like, and this is maybe a far stretch, but if you made it up, and it came true anyway. Are they making up the future? Is it not that they're doing it because they're told and to symbolize? Are they literally making up the future and it is coming true anyway, just like you did? And maybe that's what we can get into in the second hour is how God right. we are. Yeah, because I, yeah. I do believe that's what's happening in, in a magical practice of causing consciousness change in all of humanity. So yeah, it's like this global magic spell that causes us to manifest the reality they're trying to do through their effects on our consciousness. Yeah. We can get that. Well, if you're not paranoid now, you're just not even, <laughs> <laughs> this was, uh, this was pretty stunning. I mean, I, I've Freeman, I've watched and listened to you for years and, you know, I knew about all this background on like the predictions that you've made and stuff, but I never heard you put it together in a linear display so that we could really wrap our heads around it. this is big stuff i know really yeah good. man yeah. 13 years that means people could have grown up listening to me it blows my mind <laughs> 13 years may 1st was technically my anniversary uh, -huh. uh may 1st 2005 i aired a television show called columbia something none of you have ever seen because they won't allow me to put it on the internet in any way shape or form 
So only the people that were watching my television show live in Austin ever got to see the, the true episode of Columbia. But I remade it with editing out all the parts they wouldn't allow me to share on the internet and put it out as Columbia, the Illuminati goddess, which was actually my second television show, the follow-up to corporate logos and their occult meanings. But it was May 1st at the stroke of midnight that I aired Columbia to the world. And for me, this was my initial anti-Illuminati spell. And so it became my anniversary. So May Day is now the anniversary of the Freeman Perspective. And 13 years ago, I aired that. Uh, Maybe we have to arrange a big viewing party so we can all get together and watch the original sometime somewhere. Mm, yeah. That would be fun. That would, that be, would be awesome. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Those of you who are celebrating your arrested development, here he is, the Freeman. He <laughs> gave it to you. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this hour. Um, before we back out of here, though, Freeman, let people know where they can find you and what 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 you have going on. You know, just basically. It's your thing. Uh, no, no speaking engagements, but uh, Freeman TV is my icon and everything. So Twitter, I highly recommend following me on Twitter. My news is awesome, guys. You're going to learn about Sheeple. You're going to learn what CERN's doing. You're going to follow on the human cloning. You're going to know what's going down. FreemanTV.com is, of course, my primary source where everything goes. And uh, 13 years of backlogs, archives, everything. Been working on that website since, uh, you know, it was a blog spot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, freemantv.com is the one source you need. But Freeman TV on anything will get you to me. Okay. That's going to wrap up the first hour for those of you on YouTube and on the public channels. If you want more, you want the full effect, patreon.com forward slash off planet media is where you'll find it. Come and join us. We are doing some exciting and interesting things in community building on a serious level. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Unless you're joining us for second hour, we'll be back with another show real soon. The truth is out there. It's inside you. See you the next time.